Okay, so in this video, I want to explain to you exactly how you lose weight. Now, this isn't so much about the practical things that you actually have to do that we focus on most of the time. This is more on the science behind it, because once you understand it, you can play around with all of the variables so that you lose weight. You know what to do, what not to do, and you're not just guessing and throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. I think it's really important that people understand how you lose weight because this is not a secret. This is really well documented. Um, it, we, we have insane amounts of evidence to show that this is how fat loss works. Um, and there are a lot of people online that are misguiding you, that are telling you that it's something else, that it's because of carbs, that you need to eat clean, that it's because of sugar or gluten, or that you need to do HIT, or you need to not eat at night, or that you must eat breakfast, or that you have to fast. There are infinite diets out there swearing that this is the protocol, this is the thing that works. It's not calories, it's sugar and things like that. And it's completely misguided. So in this video, I want to talk to you about, I want to share with you exactly what every nutrition, nutritionist, every dietitian, every dietetics course, every uh, personal trainer course teaches people um, the science behind how fat loss works. At the end of the day, it simply comes down to energy balance. It's super duper boring. Energy is measured in calories. Calories is just a unit of measurement, just like a kilometer, just like a mile, just like a centimeter, is a unit of measurement that measures energy. And we have to ensure that we have fewer calories, less energy going into our body by the way of food than we are burning or expending on a daily basis. That is it. But it's also important to dive a little deeper and talk about how we burn or spend or expend energy on a daily basis. OK, this graph might look a little bit complicated at first, but it's really very simple. What it represents is, first of all, your BMR. This is your basic metabolic rate. It is if you were to just lie in bed and not eat, not drink, not move, not do anything all day, this is how many calories, how much energy you would burn in a day. And it is about 70% of your total calorie expenditure. Okay, so if you're if you expend 2000 calories a day, 70% of that 1400 calories will come just from your BMR, just from all the internal metabolic processes that are keeping you alive, like cell renewal, like keeping your heart beating, like, uh, like keeping your brain working, all of that stuff. Then we have NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It's basically just the energy that you burn from moving around, from making your breakfast, from doing the dishes, from walking up the stairs, from getting up out of a chair. All of that stuff comes into NEAT and it can be highly variable. So if you're somebody who does 12,000 steps a day, you are a nurse, you're on your feet all day and then you come home and you look after kids in the evening, your NEAT could be massive. It could be hundreds and hundreds of calories every day. If you sit on your bum uh, in front of a computer and do less than 3000 steps a day, your NEAT is gonna be very, very low and you're gonna burn very few calories. Then we have TEF, which is the thermic effect of food. And that is calories burned through digestion because you also burn calories when you break down food. If your diet is shit, it's probably about 10% of your total daily energy expenditure. But if your diet is really good, it is likely up to 25%. So it can vary a lot too. Then finally, at the top, you have EAT, which is exercise activity thermogenesis, which is the energy you burn from doing exercise, from lifting weights, from swimming, from running. People think of this as the best way of burning calories or sometimes the only way of burning calories, but it is not. It is responsible for very a very small amount of your daily and weekly expenditure. You are always using energy. You are always burning calories. Even when you're sleeping, you're burning or using about 60 calories an hour just to stay alive, or it costs your body about 60 calories an hour just to keep you alive. Now, in a nutshell, the goal when we are trying to lose weight is to get our energy intake below this 
total daily energy expenditure below this maintenance figure. That's really all there is to it. There are a few things that we can do in order to do that. Now you could exercise every day like a crazy person, but that is really hard to maintain. The easiest and the most efficient and the, the most sustainable way of doing this is first of all, reducing your calorie intake, reducing the amount of food that you are taking in to be below what you are expending. At the same time, you can also find ways to burn more calories. The most obvious way of which is doing more exercise, which is great, but there's only so much exercise you can do in a week. The second way of doing this is by just moving more, by increasing that need, by walking more, by getting up and down. This is the most efficient way of increasing calories going out because it doesn't require recovery and you need to, it, you can fit it into your day. So, and people really underestimate this way of increasing calories burned. But there are two other ways of increasing calories burned. One is by improving your diet. If you eat more whole foods, it's harder for your body to break down and requires more energy to break down versus very highly processed foods. So that can increase your calorie expenditure every day as well. And the final way is through building muscle because muscle is a more expensive tissue than fat. So by building more muscle, our body, our BMR actually goes up. Our body has to spend more calories every day just to maintain that muscle. It's not by a huge amount, but if you focus on increasing your calorie expenditure in each of these four areas, it does add up over time to a few hundred calories every day. And just a side note here, this is why drinks or foods or, or exercise to boost your metabolism is bullshit. It doesn't, there is no food that can boost your metabolism. You can build muscle that can increase your metabolism. You can move more that can increase your metabolism. You can get pregnant that can increase your metabolism, but you can't eat any certain type of food, avoid any certain type of food or do any particular exercise that boosts your metabolism. A small point I want to make here is that our focus is fat loss, not necessarily weight loss, although that will be a byproduct of it. Most people need to lose body fat. And so to ensure that we don't also lose muscle while we are losing weight, we need to do some form of resistance training, lifting weights. This ensures that the weight we lose comes from fat and not from muscle. So at the end of the day, it is all about CICO, calories in, calories out. You want to manipulate the different ways that calories go out and you want to reduce the amount of calories that are going in, in a few ways as well. Some people will say that this is an oversimplified view of fat loss, but it really does come down to this. So my approach is this, first of all, calories. First of all, understanding how many calories you need to maintain your weight how to get consistently into a sustainable calorie deficit. Then we can focus on all the other stuff that also matters because it all matters. Some people argue that bits of it matter more than others or that calories don't actually matter or whatever else. Calories are the most important part of it. All these other things matter as well, but they are smaller and smaller rocks. So after we have created a calorie deficit, we look at the following things. We get you doing some strength training, some resistance training to build muscle and preserve muscle on your fat loss journey. We work on increasing NEAT and getting you moving more every day. We work on increasing food quality, getting you eating more actual food and actual meals. Um, nothing like, it's not like avoiding grains or things like that. Eating things like rice, like chicken, like potatoes, like vegetables, like real food. But we also do this with flexible dieting. So making sure that we do have some room for fun foods in our diet. Otherwise it's completely unsustainable. We look at getting you eating at regular meal times, at eating filling foods. We look at lifestyle factors like sleep and stress. Uh, we look at emotional eating habits. Uh, if you eat from stress or eat from boredom or eat from sadness, this is going to get in the way and you need to deal with this and learn how to manage your stress in other more helpful, more productive ways that don't have negative consequences. And we also need to address the distorted thinking that a lot of people have um, behind their 
their bodies, diet, the scale, uh, things like all or nothing, eat, uh, not all or nothing thinking. Like if I eat one cookie, I'm going to have to eat the whole thing. Or if the scale fluctuates up, then it's all ruined. Or if I overeat one day, then I've ruined the whole thing. These are all cognitive distortions. And these get in the way more than anything else along a fat loss journey. So they absolutely have to be managed and addressed along the way. The way I work is to first of all address the big rocks and then we can address smaller and smaller rocks. Not saying that they're not important too, they just are less, less important or less significant. We also go for the low hanging fruit. For some people, certain things will be easier than others. Like getting started with strength training will be easier for some people than others. Whereas improving food quality will be easier for some people than others. We go for whatever the low hanging fruit is for you and get early successes and early wins. That's what makes it an individualized program. Not the, the same diet won't suit everybody. Not everybody needs to eat low carb or not eat in the evening or whatever. Everyone needs a slightly different approach and you need to focus on what works for you rather than just arbitrary protocols. And finally, you need to monitor and, and adjust. You need to learn along the way. You need to see what works and keep doing it. See what doesn't work and change it. So how many calories do you need to lose weight? First of all, you need to figure out what your maintenance calories are. This can, or I will tell my coaching clients what their maintenance calories are. There is a massive range in this. If you are a very small, let's say five foot tall, inactive woman um, who has very little muscle mass, you might only need 1,600 calories to maintain your current weight. And, uh, and, and so a deficit will look like very few calories. But you might be, you know, five foot 10, um, a bigger frame and extremely active and more muscle mass than the average woman. So you might need 2,300 calories a day to maintain your current weight. Knowing this is absolutely key because otherwise you can't figure out what a sensible deficit is for you. Most people just go for some random number like 1,200 and that might be the right figure for some people, but it won't work for everyone because some people much have, might have much higher daily energy expenditures. From there, you need to figure out what kind of calorie deficit is right for you. And there are lots of factors that govern this like these, and I'm gonna go over that in a different video. There isn't a magic number, but there is a sweet spot or more like a sweet range in which you will be losing weight, but you also won't be hungry as long as you're eating the right foods. There is no calculator in the world that will tell you what this is. You have to start with a ballpark figure, with a guesstimate, and from there, you monitor and adjust and find what works for, for you through trial and error. It is a process. There are lots of things that can go wrong along the way. You cannot be in a calorie deficit some of the time and still lose weight over the course of a week or a month or a few months. There are lots of things to learn and there are lots of new habits that you need to establish along the way, but it, there's no one protocol that suits everyone. So a quick summary is that energy balance, calories in and calories out, is the only thing that truly matters for weight loss. You need to understand your maintenance calories first and calculate a deficit from there based on a number of different factors. I will go through that in a separate video. You need to monitor and adjust in order to find what works for you. There are lots of things that matter and lots of things that affect how much we eat, like sleep, exercise, stress, emotions, and other things that matter to like food quality. Just because calories and energy is the biggest thing that matter and the only thing that truly governs fat loss doesn't mean that there aren't other things that matter too. And finally, massive overhauls don't work. Making small changes that compound over time is the, is the key to doing this long-term and making it stick.